I've witnessed changes already in our ecosystem. How do you look at list of endangered species and every year more species are added to it and more are disappearing from it, not because we recovered them, but because they're extirpated from the planet. So we're searching the wetland area in the desert and we're going to look for presence absence of any amphibians or reptile for a biotic index survey. This area is one of our biotic kind of hot spots. Uh, everything congregates down here. Uh, as we said, we have, it's surprising to hear we have amphibians in the desert. The, these are the places that they live. We can't go out, out there and physically capture every one of these and put them in hand. We try to do it by call and we do our best to estimate. Anything that we find uh, of oddity in the stream uh, or in the surrounding area can be indicator species for the health of the wetland area that surrounds the stream. So we'll just start. Oh, see, there's one right here. This is a Baja California tree frog. When we talk about the desert, most people don't think about wetlands, but we have two salt marshes that are believed to be vital ecosystems to the desert. One of them, the Sentinac Cienega, we are witnessing a drying of this wetland. We've gone into some restoration efforts trying to remove invasive species from the area, hoping that would return the water table back. And we have lots of ongoing questions as to what is driving this change in this wetland. We used to camp right here in Boy Scouts, 1963. And this always had running water. You know, very often 20 feet wide, foot and a half deep, year round. In March of 21, I came up here and this was dry. And I've never seen it dry in the springtime. And um, to see it dry last March was the most alarming thing that I'd ever seen in Coyote Canyon. And so what we're seeing today is this stream flows down about another half mile and you could walk right to the end of it and watch it disappear in the sand. Unless we get some storms and that spells trouble. All the science points towards an oncoming Anthropocene extinction event, and we are driving climate change faster than animals and plants can adapt to it. We may have this period over the past 10,000 years where our plants and animals have adapted to our climate, and in the very short period of 100 years, we may push our own ecosystem out of that adaptable change and so when that comes, we expect extinction events to happen. And they're no different in the desert than they would be anywhere else. Because we're already at that threshold, when you start reducing the water and increasing the temperature, there are going to be effects. The recent study designs coming out showing that we expect a 40% vegetation loss across the board in the greater Colorado Desert District. Vegetation you know, goes back to those key components. It's one of those baseline needs. If you remove one, it will throw the whole ecosystem into chaos. Many of our endangered species, like the peninsular bighorn sheep and all of our other very charismatic big fauna that people care about, we're already seeing, you know, issues and changes in them. It's all trophic effects. When one thing disappears out of a food chain, so do the things above and below it. In the southwest U.S., this last decade is the driest in 1,200 years. You can see a few green leaves here. Most of this tree is dead. It has what are 
known as the deepest roots of any plant in the world. It's not just an episodic cycle. This is a mega drought. When you are looking at damage wrought by off-road vehicles, impacts to natural water sources from over pumping nearby or old ranching farming operations. Is there anything we can do about it? If humans have caused the demise of some of those, maybe we humans should also be part of the solution. In our case, we use what are called uh, wildlife guzzlers and we collect rainwater and as wildlife finds these water sources and drinks out of that drinker box, we have seen populations of wildlife increase back to what we consider their natural population levels. There can be catastrophic failures of those said guzzler systems or there can be no rain for a long period of time. Therefore, the last couple of years, we didn't have enough rainwater to really even fill them up. So then we had to spend money to use helicopters to lift water to replace these guzzlers. We used to have groundwater more readily available across the valley, and those springs are drying up. And it's a continual shrinkage of rare and endangered habitats. There is a threshold by which ecosystems break. As long as we continue to heat and dry those wetlands, those palm groves, these rare and endangered habitats will disappear.